What's going on? Welcome back to another video here on the Bannock Industries YouTube channel. Now today, uh, we got a little random video. Um, we're going to be working on our skid steer. That guy over there, we're going to get it running. Uh, get it into the garage. We got to get some stuff out of the garage. And then, right quick, I actually got to change a coil out on the old Husky 262. Um, it's not getting spark. It didn't want to run. It ran. Then just quit one day. So we picked up some cheap coils off eBay. So I'm going to throw one of these in. So we'll start with that. Um, it shouldn't take me too long to do that. So I'll see what I'll film. Maybe just me trying to start it again. But uh, yeah, sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. So super simple. We already went ahead, we swapped the coil out. On um, this one, there's just these two little screws. That holds it in. Now something you want to do, um, depending on whatever saw you have, but when you go to put a coil in, always make sure you have a little bit of gap between the pickup and your flywheel. Just so it doesn't hit, you don't want any contact, you want it to spin freely. So what I did, I took my screwdriver, I just pried back on the coil a little bit then tighten my screws down. You want to be as close as possible without hitting. That's just general rule of thumb. But uh, now that we got this done, we'll put this little plastic cover back on that holds our wires. It's kind of cheesy, but it does its job. Well, I'm not sure what the hell's going on here with it. Uh, put the new coil on. I got good spark. Um, of course, I can't really check timing. But it should be correct because our flywheel's like there's a key on it and it's on proper. Now, like it should, I set the uh, screws here, screwed them all the way in, back out one and a half times um, on each high and low. It should fire up, but it's flooding and I got lots of moisture coming out of the curb here. So I don't know if something's not sealed in the curb or what the deal is, but like it doesn't even doesn't even want to fire. When I first when I first put the plug in, it kind of almost kicked like it wanted to fire up, but it didn't. So I don't know what the hell's issue with it. I don't really deal with chainsaws and little engines that much, so. We'll uh, we'll have to play with that some more at a later date, but we still got the old still. We're gonna be using that thing today. It was running good. It's a little. Um, it needs a little carb adjustment as well, but it actually runs. So enough of the chainsaws. I guess I failed at that today. Um, so let's let's come over here to our skid steer. Now, if you guys didn't see the first video where I introduced our skid steer, um, this thing, it's an 825 uh, Bobcat. This is either late 70s or early 80s, this one. I'm not actually sure on the date. I haven't actually checked the VIN and the actual build tag, but we'll probably do that today. Now, this thing needs a battery and what else did it need? Uh, let's see. Just get the back open. Nice and simple. I do think there was a coolant leak on it. A little bit from when we moved. Which makes sense because it's empty. So we'll have to throw some coolant in. I think it's this bottom hose here. So probably have to pull that off. Get a new one built. Then uh, we got a cylinder here that's leaking. Uh, this guy here. Now, we are going to try and pull this off, but there's a good chance these pins are seized in there. So, I'm gonna set you guys up. I gotta bring over the Super Duty. We'll boost this thing, get it going, and then uh, we'll kick the bucket off and we'll pull this thing into the shop. Well, into the garage, I guess. But. We'll get to work. We got our skid steer here. Now, this one really sucks to boost because it's literally the battery sits right here. 
really inconvenient. Um, I'm gonna put like a wire and a boost plug on the back and all that is it's like a big plastic plug that you just plug into your booster cables and then you can actually boost it fairly easy but for today we gotta do it this way and what side is what so I think this side here is positive I guess we'll find out now take our ether we'll give her a squirt I got no connection. Let's give it some time to charge. A little more ether. Okay. I gotta give it a minute. Hey, right, let's give her a try. Oh, just about. Try it again. room to flip the cab but we'll find out anyways uh, yeah I'll set you guys up
so it fits inside it actually fits really well in here there's still quite a bit of roof so uh, we're gonna go ahead I want to lay actually how should I do this it might actually make more sense if we pull the cylinder first because once we lay the cab ahead we're kind of gonna be screwed uh, I've never flipped the cab on this one but I imagine it's just the two bolts back here there's one there and one here and then this should just lay ahead now this thing does run um, not bad you probably did hear it whining I'm guessing that's just because our hydraulic fluid is low um, it's been leaking for a while and of course I moved it here and it was leaking before I actually picked this thing up so I'm guessing that's just the pump whining uh, I hope it actually had some hydraulic pumps rebuilt on this at one point so we yeah let's see actually I'm gonna put a picture so right now it looks not bad like it's the white but it's fairly rusted I had seen I'll put the picture right now but all blacked out white emblems we could do white or we could do red and then keep the red wheels and then see about getting some new decals made up um, but do this thing all blacked out gloss black and then do like this all red you know I know it doesn't add much value but it looks better and when you can make stuff look just that little bit better you know it's nice so let me know in the comments what do you want to see should we do all white leave or leave it the way it is should we do all black uh, black with the red or black with the white let me know I want to know what you guys say uh, but we'll be doing that here shortly because paints cheap I want this thing ready for winter we also need to pull these windows out um, they're just plexi I gotta pick up new stuff and then we'll cut it and we'll put new windows in probably do another piece of plexi for the back window and then I gotta figure something out for the front I don't know if I'll have time before winter to figure out a front door or not but we'll see we will see but priorities cylinder battery we'll get that stuff done right now and well we'll get it out so we can get new stuff and then yeah I'll shut up and get to work. So we got our cylinder out, it's on the bench. It's got this little notch here, which is telling me this should be a punch lock. So I should be able to just hit that with a punch and a hammer, and this thing should come out. So let's take, where'd our punch go? There it is. Tight. Gotta use what you got some days. Yeah. So you want to set that in there like that. This is the rod that just came out. So we want to break loose this now so we can pull this packing nut off and then we can actually get new seals for that. There we go, nuts off. Our cushion, I believe is what they call these.
So there we got our rod, our uh, cylinder, the end packing, um, not a packing nut, but more or less your piston. This was being really weird. Um, for some reason it was almost wanting to be threaded on the inside, so it took a little bit to get off, but it's off. So we can uh, keep that. And then uh, here's our packing nut. Of course there was the inside packing that's like a roll-in packing. Then the outside lift seal, like that guy. That's what was leaking was this. Um, there could have been some bypass on our piston too, but so we're gonna get new seals for this, a new seal for this, then we'll put the cylinder back together. It can go back on. Um, the rod end doesn't look great. It's more oval than it is round. So ideally you I wow. Ideally you would want to replace that. We're not going to. Um, this thing's old until it added like catastrophically fails I'm not gonna replace something like that but uh, now what we gotta go ahead and do uh, we gotta get these loose now it kind of sucks because I don't have an impact here I don't actually have a 15 16 socket so I gotta do those with a wrench of course that's what I was talking about those so I'll try see what I can do hopefully they'll come off uh, if not I'll have to wait and bring bring the proper tool, but we'll try with a wrench. Here we have it. She's ahead. Now, this is my first time flipping this one ahead. Um, like all the newer ones, they have a little gas shock to help stop it, control it. This one doesn't. So I used to come along. I went to one of the support beams there. Um, using this eyelet here pulled it ahead but once I was ahead I wasn't sure how far this was gonna come so I put the I put a strap to the back there just so I can control it going forward I didn't know how far it was gonna go eventually I did see that there is a cable here now whoever did this this is after so I'll probably put a strap from there to there just cuz uh, I don't need this falling uh, I don't want to wreck my cables, but now that this thing's open, uh, you can just see it's so simple. Like everything about this thing is just simple. So you have your throttle here, that runs back to the engine. It's all just cable. Um, of course, our pump would be probably under here because the engine there. So yeah, you have a pump under there. I'm guessing this is hydraulic tank. I don't know though. That, yeah. I really don't know much about this one. Honestly and truly. I bought it, well, I picked it up, and then, uh, you know, we brought it here. I really haven't done anything with it since I unloaded it. So there's our battery. Um, kind of a weird spot to get. But uh, we'll pull this one out, we'll measure it up, we'll get another one. I'm stuck at this point. Um, this is what happens when you don't have enough tools to do your job. But that battery will not come out. Um, if I was able to remove this lever, it might come out the front, but there's that lip where that body, or not the body, but the side panel kind of curls over there. That's catching, so I'm gonna have to take and grind that. We'll just cut along the top and then square it out so the battery will lift out. Won't hurt anything, but we need to get that out. Um, luckily, I took measurements, so I'll be able to go get a battery, and then uh, I'll grab my grinder from work We'll cut that out here, um, probably later date, because uh, I don't have time to get that done today. And then, uh, you know, we got some work lights and stuff that we're going to be putting on, like, the front of this. So, I'll show you guys those, I guess. Uh, this actually ended up being a pretty good deal. 
we got all kinds of work lights like this i'll be mounting some on this thing getting it prepped we'll get the paint of course you guys let me know what you want to see we'll go from there but uh yeah I'll end off this video here. Hopefully I have enough and hopefully this was, you know, you guys enjoyed it. But uh, we'll see you next time.